All right, here we go. Welcome, Eve and Gary, to um, the Artist Spotlight 2020 with um, the Mill Stream Arts Festival and also the St. Cloud Downtown Art Crawl. Um, this has been a uh, joy for me because uh, there's been a lot of artists I've never met. And, and I love being able to meet new artists from our community and get to know new artists from com our community. And this collaboration between the Downtown Art Crawl and Millstream has really been a wonderful opportunity um, for all of us to connect. Um, and so first thing I'd like to start with is if you could share who you are and, and what do you do? What is your art? What do you do? <laughs> you wanna go? Well, I'm Eve Wallinger. This is my husband, Gary. And we've been doing our art together for almost 20 years now, I think. It's acrylic. Uh, how would you describe it? Kind of pointillism. Kind of. <laughs> kind of. Uh, well, we paint with dots. It's, it's, with not, dots. it's not pointillism in the sense that we're expecting the, the colors to be blended by the mm -hmm. brain or the eye. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. The original sense of pointillism. But we do paint with dots because yeah. we were originally inspired by Aboriginal paintings, which use, they use sticks, mm -hmm. you know, and with dot, dots of color. And mm -hmm. then I want to, I get the other descriptor would be magical realism. We try to do, have it look somewhat realistic, but with kind of a spin on it in some way to make you kind of like look at it differently or maybe more closely. So mm -hmm. I was going to say Aboriginal. That was that was a, a piece that popped into my mind when I when I've looked at your work. It had that uh, Aboriginal um, feeling to it. Um, and then so tell me your background. How did you come to um, paint together? I you know, I, you know, it's working with your partner and um, and art. How did art come into your life? Well, we're both pretty artsy. <laughs> That's good. Really That's good. good. We both really appreciate art. We're interested in design and architecture. And um, again, yeah, I guess I don't know what what made us start like about 20 years ago. We I think you of, had the idea. Well, yeah, but we were both talking about doing painting or something. And there was a documentary on TV about the Aboriginal artists in Australia. They'd sit around with uh, like a canvas or bark, I guess was what we saw them, and then using actual sticks. And they kind of work as a group. And so actually when we started for a long time, we would literally sit on the floor with kind of the canvas on the floor between us and work. And we, we still often work at the same time, but now our knees don't really pass <laughs> on the floor so much anymore. We sit on the table. table. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we actually have a picture of that, of the two of you sitting at a, a table doing um, your art together. And I'll, I'll bring that up here for you so you can so, so right here is a picture of the two of you um, sitting together doing that. That's so a, one of the art crawls in yeah. St. Cloud. Yeah, the downtown art crawl. Okay, yeah. good. And, and do, is there certain brushes you use or just um, is it different um, sizes, different techniques? Or? Sticks. It sticks. Yeah, oh. little sticks. Like sticks. people use for miniature kebabs <laughs> or, or, or dirt. Oh, oh. And, and there's different sizes you know and plus mm -hmm. we've used how to we've learned kind of tech kind of <laughs> invented our own techniques i guess you know so if you want a bigger circle you maybe go around some or do the other side of the stick or whatever yeah and you know and um my next question that i was going to talk about was you know in a world full of people trying to stand out in the art world, um, I'm already seeing things that you all are doing um, that the, you know, I've been asking people, what's the one thing you do um, to really set yourself apart? But I say the things I've seen so far, you know, even the partnering that you all do is unique. Is there anything else that, you know, really stands out about your work that the one thing you want people to leave with? Well, you know, <laughs> Strangely, people ask us the most about our ability to paint together and oh. not each other. <laughs> mm -hmm. but, uh, I don't know. I think it goes back to what Eve said. We just try to look at things from maybe a different, per give you a different perspective. Um, mm -hmm. that idea of magical realism. Yeah. Kind of a spin, put a different spin on uh, kind of everyday things. I mean, and I guess we 
we usually do na- nature, right? Natural, if it's details of trees or flowers or kind of a landscape. And and really like stuff from around Minnesota. It's mainly yeah. regional kind of, of uh, plants and landscapes and stuff. So oh, well, wonderful. Let's take it. Let's take a look at another piece here. Uh, let's see what this one here is. A owl. Yeah, this is one of our favorite pieces. Actually, we did oh. it. Was it a year earlier ago? this year? I guess really. Yeah. 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 I feel like this one turned out really well. This guy was in our yard. It's a, a barn owl. Oh, neat. You know, and and even I, that, oh, the twinkle in his eye was actually in the photo. <laughs> you know, and I know Gary, you mentioned at the beginning about um, pointillism and you know colors blending together, but this almost has a little bit of that. You know, some yeah. of the that does with your eye a little bit. That's true. It, it does a little bit. You're right. But yeah, I mean, but I mean, that really wasn't the, the, the way that we started off thinking about how we were going to paint. Mm-hmm. But it, this one was a little different in that. Well, uh, the background is using all little dots, which I did. And on this one, Eve painted the owl pretty much and she used bigger dots. So it was kind of an interesting <laughs> combination of the two. Yeah, this was the biggest dots we ever used. <laughs> ah, nice. <laughs> Nice. And then we'll let's look at the next piece here. Um, prairie dance. That's oh, yeah. Yeah. So for this one, we went out to Center Care. You know, they have that walking path oh, around yes. it. And, and we laid down or no, I guess we kind gathered. Of, yeah. we, we gathered yeah, a bunch so of, of, of dried plants and brought them home and then held them up to kind of get that perspective we wanted. Yeah, we wanted a perspective that, again, uh, one that people don't usually have. I guess kind of like an ant's eye view, or like if you were laying down in the prairie grass and looking up. Mm-hmm. Can you really and, feel that? And then interestingly, I mean, this one really only the sky is with the dots. We did the plants, but with, with still with the sticks, but we didn't yeah, use dots. Yeah. We just drew little right. People line really segments. like this. This is one where prints of it saw quite a bit. They are really that's really compelling to people for some reason. So. Yeah, the colors are nice together too, you know, the yellow and blue really pop together. It's true. Um, how it's, the next one, cyberspace best, cyberspace. Let's, let's, let's just bring it up here. Okay. T- to be honest, we, we kind of like doing abstracts, but mm-hmm. they don't sell as well in central Minnesota, uh. but everyone well, we just feel compelled to do one. Well, we like to do it. It's not like we're doing it like we have to live off the money or anything. But no. Yeah, people just, some people really like, but yeah, it seems like up here it's not, maybe more younger people actually like the abstracts or something, but yeah, we really enjoy doing them. And mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Like more non-representational where the the Absolutely. the sticks and the, um, and the, the dried grasses have that representation. Like that, right. that makes sense for the area. I noticed that a lot with sales at Millstream also. Uh, okay. And in this one, you can see more of the Aboriginal influence. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And the next one is a dot moon shadow. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, moon shadows. Um, yeah. Again, you can see it's a, you know, everyday kind of scene we think of it as being up on the north shore um but then with these a different spin on it with the colors and you know something that you wouldn't expect so uh you kind of see it in a different way Mm -hmm. and magical feel well and the other thing is yeah we really like trying to do stuff with shadow you know it add, it adds this kind of mystical quality to it too. I really I particularly really love light love night scenes. <laughs> so yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice, nice. The next one here we have with the leaves and the white flowers. Harbinger yeah, of spring. Harbinger of spring. Yeah, it's actually blood root, the blood root flower. Oh, sure. Well, lots of different sizes of dots in this one, I can see. Uh, this is another one of our favorites, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
I don't know what you want to say about this one. Uh, well, it's on very this one, realistic. It's not. Yeah, this is one of our more yeah. realistic paintings. I did the leaves. Eve did the flowers. We were going to do a background, but what, we got this far and we thought we liked it the way it was. So yeah. we just left it yeah. with no particular background. Right, dark. Mm -hmm. But it gives it depth. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, all the paintings start out with a black background. Oh, yeah. okay. That is the colors and stuff to pop. And, you know, oftentimes we'll get to a certain point and I'll say, oh, we're done. <laughs> and you'll go like, well, we haven't done the sky yet. <laughs> but uh, I was dark contrast. So this so we Gary liked it that way too. So we stayed it. with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. This next one just says choice. So I almost thought was this my choice or <laughs> <laughs> that's fireflies. Oh. I see. Yeah, we kind of like the idea of the fireflies becoming the stars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, or vice versa. Or yeah, or vice yeah. versa. Again, it's kind of a North Shore feeling scene. Yeah, with the shadow. Mm -hmm. I was going to mention the shadows. Those those really pop in this one with the front of the trees and yeah. the shadows on the trees. And, and this, this one, one, the magic, the magic is what actually exists. The fireflies and the stars, so which are magic in and of themselves. Mm -hmm. I agree. And the next piece here. Oh, we're back. Got this one again. Maybe I gave you two of one. That's okay. okay. That's okay. Fluorescence. 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 Mm -hmm. This one, this took a long time. Yeah, it did. <laughs> mm -hmm. How long, speaking of that, how long does something like this take for both of you? I think that's it's really one of those questions that we get. How many I think it really on this one? varies so much. Oh, I have no idea. I don't know, a couple weeks. Um, yeah, I mean, it's really how many hours, you know, that would have more meaning, but we don't, we really don't keep track of how many hours it takes. And a lot of it depends upon how the size of the dots, you know, how mm -hmm. complicated it is if we're doing dots on top of dots, yeah. um, but, you know, well, just that, the yeah. size of the canvas. And then how much repetition there is, because some of them, when there's more pattern on the abstract ones, you can kind of get into a groove and go more quickly. But mm -hmm. this one, the, the the flowers, as you can see, are, are relatively big dots. But when you get into the field behind them, it's very tiny dots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Gary likes the, um, the <laughs> tiny, tiny dots. <laughs> yeah, I teach. Um, I've taught younger kids and I teach college students also and and I talk with them about the when they're making and creating work that time kind of goes away a little bit does that happen with your pieces yes yes it, absolutely it's, it's kind of zen <laughs> there's, a, there's a quote that we have up but I can't remember who said it but it was that art you let's see with art you lose yourself and find yourself at the same time Something like that. It's like mm -hmm. that is that's so true. Mm -hmm. You get touched yeah. with things in certain ways, but then you're you kind of just your consciousness kind of floats off to another place. So, mm -hmm. and you know, we have a few more pieces, but before that, I, I that I, I want to talk about. So, people, I have your website up here, uh, WalingaArts.com that um, mm -hmm. people can go there and purchase your work? Are you showing it anywhere right now that people could see your work or? Yeah, actually we do have some pieces at Minnesota Market and St. Joe. Oh, you do, okay. Yeah. Good, good. Mm -hmm. I think that's the only place right now. Yeah, then I think this fall we're gonna have some up at uh, Art in Motion. Sure. Uh, hopefully, well, maybe, maybe. Well, yeah, we're hopefully. gonna try for that. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. we're off. Pretty, you know, maybe once a year about, you know, a little less than that, usually at the Art Crawl um, in St. Cloud. Sure. But people can go to your website and purchase things online and, and connect with you there. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. We just started last year doing G Clay prints. Um, oh, sure. Pieces, which are just great. You know, just the quality of it is so good. So makes things more affordable. Yeah, it does. Oh, interesting. Um, so we have two more pieces here. See this one? The butterfly, the monarch butterfly and the purple flowers. Yeah, Madam Butterfly. 
Mm -hmm. This was your idea. You should yeah, talk about Yeah, I really, this one. yeah. We've done a couple with monarchs. And, uh, well, I mean, we're, we're, and one of the things that we're involved in is environmental issues, especially, especially climate change at this point in time. And I think everybody now is aware of the, uh, the stresses the monarch population is under. Mm -hmm. So on our minds a lot. And of course the colors are such a great contrast, like with the green and the purple. And mm -hmm. then that, you know, those flowers, it's like, what is it? Alum? I can't remember the no. name of that flower, but I mean, which is an actual flower, but it's also, again, the magic is in the actual, the actual thing. We didn't really have to do anything to it, but yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a, um, a good subject for a painting, we thought. Yeah, it is. It's beautiful. A lot Thank of emphasis you. on that butterfly just draws you right in. And our last piece is Birch Dance. Oh, yeah. This is a popular one. People have bought a lot of prints of this one. Um, and again, it gets back to what we were saying earlier about trying to uh, adopt a different perspective on, on the objects that we paint. Or, or treat them in a different way. So we just like the idea of looking up, much as we did in the prairie dance, you know, at the at the um, canopy of the aspens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we like we like the contrast of the blue and the yellows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It taps into that mystical piece you talk about, you know, laying down and looking up at something, a totally different feeling and point of view when you're experiencing that. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, so with this time, you know, during this time, um, during COVID, how has your practice changed? What is it? What is this? What does it look like for you right now as artists? Well, I mean, people, we've heard from a few people that's like, oh, you must be getting a lot of paintings done now, <laughs> which you might think, but I mean, we've actually had a hard time painting, sitting down and starting them. Yeah, we went several months with doing nothing. I think we were just kind of stressed, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, no, just it's probably been within the last couple of weeks we, we started doing some new ones. Um, well, part of the motivation was because of this. Oh, right. Good. Yes. Good. Online festival. I mean, mm -hmm. that really forced us to do some more work. I mean, oh, you would I'm think it to kind of get out of where things are at now but it's more like I find myself more thinking about the stuff that's going although on although I will use it as a way of not watching the news because yeah. <laughs> lots of times we'll just we paint in our family room and we'll, you know we'll have the tv on and so I've been trying to just have music on and paint yeah, that's without listening to any of the news yeah that, music is the best yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that makes sense. So what is your dream project? Do you have a dream project that is on the horizon? <laughs> oh. This is Eve's idea, mostly. <laughs> yeah, but you, it's your dream, too, right? <laughs> well, I'm agreeing to it. <laughs> oh, well, so two years ago, we had the opportunity to go to Burning Man, which is this incredible festival out in the desert of Nevada. This, like, huge art festival with fantastic sculptures out on this desert. They call it the playa. Just fantastic sculptures in this beautiful backdrop of just this white, you know, and there's mountains in the background. And of course, the sunlight is fantastic. And then at night, the things are all lit up. And it's talk about a, a magical place. That was it. Mm -hmm. But so we thought when we were there, like, oh, it'd be so cool to do, you know, have art pieces out here, you know, but it seemed pretty overwhelming. But I don't know, we've started to think about it more. And as a new Burning Man is coming up, which is going to be virtual this year, there's been a lot of, of, of um, interviews with artists and stuff. And it just made it seem like maybe a normal average person could actually aspire <laughs> to do something like this. So we're, our, the idea is to do like a school of fish. The fish would be pretty big, like out in the desert, a school of fish. And then <laughs> the part that's the most grandiose is that the, each one would be like a, a wind harp. An aeolian an harp. An aeolian harp, it's called. So yeah. there'd be like sound as well as these fish. But we don't, we have to figure out how to render it. Right. Collaborate with other people, I think, because 
but I don't know. But that's like our dream. Yeah, just that's yet. the idea. Wow, that sounds exciting. <laughs> That sounds exciting. You know, as artists going out and experiencing things are really, you know, bring us ideas. And I know I just spoke to an artist early today that talked about the getting out and seeing and then coming back and how important that is to your work to have the, those experiences. So so now people um, will be able to purchase your work at your website. I, I've been to it. It's very easy to navigate around and it has these pieces on it and, and prints available for people to purchase. Is there anything else you would like to share with us today or with our audience today? Buy art, support oh. artists. I think it's important, particularly right. in these times. Mm -hmm. Well, and also I want to encourage other people to do art. This is like we're in an area that is so friendly to artists. Mm -hmm. So many, you know, the Minnesota, you know, funds lots of grants and things. And there's a lot of shows and so many opportunities with all the, with the festivals and uh, like Millstream and uh, the art crawls in downtown St. Cloud. There's people just looking to wanting to display local artists. It's fantastic. And the community of artists is fantastic too so you might not think central minnesota would be a great place to do art but it really is yeah. it really is yeah i agree i agree that is definitely something that's kept me in this area too is is the arts and the artist community and and what a joy to get to meet you too because i i thought i knew everybody in the arts community and <laughs> i'm just and here here i got to connect with the two of you and and now we're Thanks. not strangers, so that's that's good. Even virtually, we've been able to connect. Hey, yes. yes. <laughs> you too. Yes. Well, thank you. And again, people can go to your website, and it's right up there on the screen for everybody to see and um, to purchase your work. And I agree with Gary. Buy art and support your local artists and, and go out and see their work wherever you can. So thank you for your time, even, Gary, and have a wonderful day. You You're too. welcome. Bye. Bye-bye.